Oh, wallahi, this is a beautiful, beautiful topic. It's a topic that's going to cover many areas of, within the subjects of Islam. There is some aqidah in there, there is some fiqh in there, there is some dhikr and dua in there, and there are some issues of adab and akhlaq in there. All of these different topics come together, tafsir and hadith, they're all going to come together into this topic of purifying the soul. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد We begin with the praise of Allah عز وجل and by asking Allah to exalt the mention and grant peace to our Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to his family and his companions. Now before I begin the topic today insha'Allah ta'ala and introducing the course and what you can expect from it bi idnillahi ta'ala I want to begin with a few words of thanks first of all to the Imam and the Mu'addin Imam uh, Sheikh Ibrahim and the Mu'addin and all of the efforts, the, the staff in the masjid that they made for facilitating this for us, they were very, very helpful and we caused them a lot of inconvenience. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to place it heavy on the scale of their good deeds, Yawm al Qiyamah. I would also like to extend my thanks as always to the Islamic Affairs and Charitable Activities Department of the Government of Dubai and Jam'iyat Dar al-Birr and all of the other people who are involved in establishing this class. It is really a blessing. Wallahi, it's a blessing. And blessings need to be shown gratitude for. That we can gather together in this house from the houses of Allah Azza wa Jal and we can remind each other about the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I always remind you whenever we start a class like this about the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which he said, مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بُيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِلَّا نَزَلَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّكِينَةِ وَغَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَ أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ No people gather together in a house from the houses of Allah reciting the book of Allah and studying it among themselves except the tranquility descends upon them and Allah's mercy covers them and the angels surround them and Allah mentions them among those that are with Him subhanahu wa ta'ala it's worth remembering these things when you have difficulty to come to the class. The first week, usually everyone is a bit excited. The weather didn't help us today. But after that, your, you know, your energy, it goes. Like in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, in which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ لِكُلِّ عَمَلٍ شِرَّةٍ وَلِكُلِّ شِرَّةٍ فَتْرَةٍ فَمَنْ كَانَتْ شِرَّتُهُ إِلَى سُنَّةِ فَقَدْ أَفْلَحْ وَمَنْ كَانَتْ فَتْرَتُهُ إِلَى غَيْرِ ذَلِكَ فَقَدْ هَلَكْ أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم He said, every action has a time of enthusiasm. And every time you have some enthusiasm, you will dip down again, you will go low again. So whoever's enthusiasm is in accordance with my sunnah has been successful. And whoever dips below what my sunnah has established will be destroyed. So just remember whenever you find it difficult to come and keep going with the duros and the classes, or when you find hardship in coming to the masjid and attending, that there is a very, very great reward in us coming together here today. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, أَنْ يُعَلِّمَنَا مَا يَنْفَعُنَا وَأَنْ يَنْفَعَنَا بِمَا عَلَّمَنَا وَأَنْ يَزِيدَنَا وَإِيَّاكُمْ عِلْمًا وَأَنْ يُوَفِّقَنَا وَإِيَّاكُمْ لِلْعَمَلِ بِهِ we ask Allah to teach us what will benefit us, to benefit us with what He teaches us, to increase us in knowledge and to give us all the ability to act upon it. 
The topic today is a very, very beautiful topic. It's a series, really. And for a long, long time, I was waiting to do this series. It's a very, very beautiful, beautiful topic. The topic we're going to be speaking about is the topic of Tazkiyatun Nafs, purifying the soul. And later, inshallah, today we're going to understand what that means, inshallah, to purify the soul and what is the soul and what does it mean to purify it. But wallahi, this is a beautiful, beautiful topic. It's a topic that's going to cover many areas of, within the subjects of Islam. There is some aqidah in there, there is some fiqh in there, there is some dhikr and dua in there, and there are some issues of adab and akhlaq in there. All of these different topics come together, tafsir and hadith, they're all going to come together into this topic of purifying the soul. And I wanted to start by describing to you what is meant by the nafs. Because until we understand, I was going to start with what is tezkiyah, but after a while I thought if we don't define what the nafs is, then we're talking about tezkiyah to any tezkiyah to madha, any what are we trying to purify. The soul in the Qur'an and nafs in the Qur'an, it is described with three awsaf, three descriptions. Three descriptions that Allah describes the nafs with in the Quran. The first one is an nafsul mutama'inna. In which ayah? Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutama'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah. In Surah Al Fajr. The nafs which is mutma'inna. What does this mean? It is the soul that is obedient to Allah, the soul which commands good and keeps away from evil, the soul whose heart is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is an nafsul mutma'in. The second is, the second one is al ammaratu bis su. The soul which is inclined and commanding evil. In the statement of Allah Azza wa Jalla in Surah Yusuf, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءٍ I do not declare myself to be innocent. The soul is constantly inclined, constantly telling me to do evil. And what about the third one? In Surah Al-Qiyamah, in the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالنَّفْسِ اللَّوَّامَةِ I swear by the soul that is blaming itself. How do we join between these three? First question, are these three different people? Or are these three descriptions for the same soul that is within a person? The rajih in this issue, the correct opinion, is that this is a description of a single soul which goes between these three situations. It's not three different people. It is one person. Sometimes the person is like this and sometimes the person is like that. And there are actions a person can do which will remove them from being in one category and place them into another category. Two of these attributes, they are opposite to each other. And nafsul mutma'inna, the soul which is tranquil and the soul which is obedient to Allah, and an nafsul ammara to his soul, and the soul which is commanding evil, these two are opposite. You're trying to run away from one into the other. As for an nafsul lawama, the correct opinion is that both of them are like this. Their soul, it blames. In what way? If the soul blames you for doing good deeds and stops you from being righteous and it constantly reminds you not to do good or you feel disinclined or reluctant to do good, then this is a nafs al-lawwamah which goes with 
It goes like that, they go together. But if it is when you miss something good, like you missed your sunnah prayer after Maghrib, and your soul, you blame yourself for this, and you say, لو استقبلت من أمري ما استدبرت If the chance came again for me, I would. I would wish to do that differently. I would wish to make that prayer. Then this is an nafsul lawama which goes together with an nafsul mutma'in. So you should never stop blaming yourself. But the question is, what do you blame yourself for? Do you blame yourself for missing out on what is good, or you blame yourself for missing out on what is on what is bad? And this is what the Sheikh Minutheimin rahimahullah taala he said when he joined between them. He said, فَأَمَّنْ الْأَمَّارَةُ بِالسُّوءُ فَتَلُومُكَ إِذَا فَعَلْتَ الْخَيْرُ وَإِذَا تَرَكْتَ السُّوءُ وَالْمُطْمَئِنَّهُ تَلُومُكَ إِذَا فَعَلْتَ السُّوءُ وَإِذَا تَرَكْتَ الْخَيْرُ If you have a soul that is inclined to evil, then it blames you for doing good and for leaving evil. And if you have a soul that is peaceful, and tranquil and connected with Allah, then this soul, when you do good, it blames you for missing out on good, and it blames you when you fall into something evil. Ibn al-Qayyim, he gives a really nice example, and I'm going to quote a lot from Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, because a lot of his books deal with this particular topic. Many of his books, Al-Wabil Al-Sayyib, Al-Dawa Al-Dawa, Tariq Al-Hijratayn, Madarij Al-Salikin, Igathat Al-Lahfan, all of them deal with this, this topic. Many, many books that deal with this topic. He gave a really nice example. He gave the example of a traveler, Al-Musafir. The traveler on the road, there are Hayyat wa Aqarib. Snakes and scorpions on the road. If the traveler spends all of his time, all of his time, to look for every single snake and scorpion and kill it or remove it from the road, he will never travel anywhere. He will never travel anywhere. He said like this, he will not be able to travel anywhere. However, if his intention is to keep away from them and avoid them as much as he can. And whenever one appears for him, he deals with it. Then this is the one who will continue on their travels. And this is the example he gives with regard to afatun nafs. The sicknesses of the, of the nafs. The reality is that your nafs will have sicknesses. All of us, we will all make mistakes. كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمَ خَطَّى وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِينَ التَّوَّابُونَ All of the children of Adam frequently make mistakes. And the best of those who frequently make mistakes are those who frequently repent. You will not be able to remove every single issue from your nafs. But what you learn to do is that when something comes up for you, you learn how to deal with it. Like the traveler, you cannot go down the road and remove every scorpion and every snake from the road. Otherwise, you'll never travel anywhere. But what you do is you avoid them where you can. So you step around them, which like you, when you have these issues of your nafs, you step around them, you try to avoid them. And when you can't avoid them, you learn how to be able to deal, how to be able to deal with them. If we don't purify our nafs, what is the condition that it will remain upon? In Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us, Inna aradna al-amanata ala samawati wal-ardi wal-jibal fa'abayna an yahminnaha wa ashfaqana minha wa hamalaha al-insan إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا We offered the amana of the sharia of Islam, the amana of doing what Allah commanded you and leaving what Allah made haram. We offered you this amana to the heavens, to the earth, to the mountains. They declined it. 
and they were fearful of it and mankind took it on. Innahu kana zaluman jahula. He was extremely oppressive and extremely ignorant. And this tells us what will be the case of a person if they don't purify themselves. As Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala he said, an nafsu zalimatun jahila. The soul is oppressive and ignorant. وَالظُّلْمُ وَالْجَهْلُ لَا يَأْتِي مِنْهُمَا إِلَّا كُلَّ شَرْ He said, oppression and ignorance, what comes from them is every single evil. Everything evil you can think of, it goes back to الظُّلْمُ وَالْجَهْلُ Everything evil you can think of. Think of any single thing which is evil. It goes back to oppression or ignorance. Either you didn't know that it was wrong and you did it, or you knew that it was wrong and you did it anyway. And these are the two that Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Fatiha. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ So all evil goes back to these two things. فَإِنْ رَحِمَ اللَّهُ الْعَبْدَ فَمَنَّ عَلَيْهِ بِالْعِلْمِ النَّافِعِ وَسُلُوكِ طَرِيقِ الْعَدْلِ فِي أَخْلَاقِهِ وَأَعْمَالِهِ خَرَجَتْ نَفْسُهُ مِنْ هَذَا الْوَصْفِ وَصَارَتْ مُطْمَئِنَّهِ إِلَى طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ وَذِكْرِهِ وَلَمْ تَأْمُرْ صَاحِبَهَا إِلَّا بِالْخَيْرِ He said, if Allah, if Allah has mercy on a person, and so Allah gives them beneficial knowledge, and Allah takes them on a moderate path, any a just path. In their manners and actions, their nafs will no longer be zalima jahila. It will no longer be oppressive. It will no longer be ignorant. And it will become mutma'inna. It will become the tranquil nafs. And it will, it will submit to the obedience of Allah and His remembrance. And it will only tell you to do what is good. Here he summarizes for you with the tafsir of Surah Al-Ahzab, this ayah at the, the, at the end of Surah Al-Ahzab. He summarizes for you that if you don't purify this soul and correct it and bring it towards what is pleasing to Allah, it will remain in a state of oppression and ignorance. But if Allah blesses you with teaching you how to purify this soul, it will leave that description of ignorance and oppression, and instead it will become a soul which is mutma'inna, which is obedient to Allah, and which remembers Allah, and which commands you to do good rather than evil. And Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, اِتَّفَقَ السَّالِكُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى اخْتِلَافِ طُرُقِهِمْ وَتَبَايُنِ سُلُوكِهِمْ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ النَّفْسَ قَاطِعَةٌ بَيْنَ الْقَلْبِ وَبَيْنَ الْوُصُولِ إِلَى الرَّبِّ He said, all those people who have taken the path to Allah, even though they have many different roads that they have taken and different any ways that they have chosen, they all agree that your soul is what stands between your heart and your Lord. The soul is what stands between your heart and between your Lord. So did we understand now, inshallah, what the goal or what the, what the soul is and where we, are, where we are going with this? We understood and nafs That we want to take the, the nafs away from الظلم والجهل, oppression and ignorance. And we want to take the nafs away from الأمارة بالسوء, constantly commanding you to do evil. And we want to bring the nafs towards the one that blames you if you leave something good. And blames you if you do something wrong. And it is obedient and submissive to Allah. The nafs that it is said to it, يَا أَيَّتُهَا النَّفْسُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّهِ إِرْجِعِي إِلَىٰ رَبِّكِ this is the goal. So now we understood what the word nafs means. Now we come to the word tazkiyah. Can we take from the Quran 
what is the meaning of tazkiyah in the Quran? The statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا Surah At-Tawbah Take from their wealth a sadaqah, yani zakah, that will purify them and give them zakah. And in the word zakah, even zakat in your money, what does it mean? It means two things, right? Zakah in your money is two things. It means at-tathir, purifying, and it means an-nama'u wa ziyada, giving you more money and giving you an increase in wealth. So the same thing is the same thing that Tazkiyah is based upon. Tazkiyah is based upon two things, not one. Some people misunderstood. They thought that Tazkiyah is built upon one thing only, which is at tathir cleaning your heart. But it's not. It's built upon cleaning your heart and then building up your heart with praiseworthy attributes and characteristics. Taking the soul and cleaning the soul. And then giving the soul its praiseworthy characteristics that it needs to be successful. So it means a tathir purification, and it means an nama'u wa ziyada, giving you an increase and giving you more. And from this is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Taha, وَمَنْ يَأْتِهِ مُؤْمِنًا قَدْ عَمِلَ الصَّالِحَاتِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الدَّرَجَاتُ الْعُلَىٰ جَنَّاتُ عَدْنٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَذَٰلِكَ جَزَاءُ مَنْ تَزَكَّىٰ Whoever comes to Allah as a mu'min, whoever comes to Allah as a mu'min, as a believer, having done righteous deeds, it is they who will have the highest of levels. They will live within Jannati Adan, everlasting paradise under which rivers flow, and they will be in it forever. And this is the reward of man tazakka, the one who purifies themselves. Which meaning is the most apparent in the meaning of the ayah in Surah At-Tawbah? Which meaning is the meaning that comes to you more? It's a tathir, right? Cleaning. خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَحِّرُهُمْ It cleans them. What is the meaning that is most apparent in the meaning of tazakka in Surah Taha? It is annama'u wa ziyada because Allah mentioned the iman and the righteous deeds that they do and their worship of Allah and that this is what gave them jannat, jannati adam. It gave them paradise. So when a person joins between these two things, they cleanse their soul and then they build up their soul. Both of these is what is dealt with, with the, in the science of Tazkiyat and nafs The Prophet ﷺ was asked about Tazkiyat and nafs فَقَالَ أَنْ يَعْلَمَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ مَعَهُ حَيْثُ كَانْ That the person knows that Allah is with them wherever they are. They know that Allah is with them wherever they are. In reality, this covers both sides. Because when you know that Allah is with you wherever you are, Allah is with you with his knowledge, and Allah is with you with his sight and his hearing, subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah, you know that Allah is with you wherever you are, first of all, you are scared, right? You are scared from doing the haram. You make istighfar and tawbah and you purify your heart and your soul. And when you know that Allah is with you wherever you are, you increase in good deeds and good actions. So you bring between these two things. Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, قَالَ تَعَالَ قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا In reality, this ayah, this is our uh, asl, right? All of our discussion is going to be around this ayah in Surah Al-Shams. This ayah, all of our discussion is around it. And everything we're going to build upon in the coming lessons 
from how to achieve purity in the soul and what it means to be pure in the soul, all of it is going to come back to these ayat. Because these ayat, this is the asl in Tazkiyatun Nafs. It is the core of it. I'm going to read you a statement of Sheikh Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiti in Adwa Al-Bayan. He says this statement that amazed me. He says, Aqsam Allah Ta'ala, Allah Azza wa Jal swore in this surah, Saba'a marratin bi saba'i ayatin kawniya. In this surah, Allah swore, certainly the one who purifies their soul will be successful. And the one who corrupts their soul and makes it dirty and unclean, that person will be disgraced and will lose. Allah swore seven times with seven ayat from the ayat of Allah in this universe. What did Allah swear by? He is shams, wal qamar, wal layl, wal nahar, wal sama, wal ard, wal nafs al bashariya. Allah swore by the sun, wal shams wa duhaha, and Allah swore by the moon, wal qamar idha talaha, and Allah swore by a layl, wal layl idha yarshaha, mashallah, and Allah swore by and Nahar, when Nahari, the daytime, the Jallaha, and Allah swore by the heavens, was Sama Iwama Banaha, while Abdi Wama Tahaha, Allah swore by the earth, Wanafsin, and Allah swore by the soul. The soul and the one who created it. And Allah is the one who inspired us to know what is wrong and what is right. What is wicked and what is righteous. All of this, all of this, he said, Allah mentioned a situation for each one of these seven things. And Allah mentioned all of those seven things for one reason only. وَهُوَ فَلَاحُ مَنْ زَكَّى تِلْكَ النَّفْسِ وَخَيْبَةِ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا All of those seven things, Allah mentioned it for one reason. And that is the success of the person who purifies their soul and the loss of the one who corrupts their soul. He said, وَمَعَ كُلِّ آيَةٍ he said, and every ayah that came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a very huge ayah from the ayat of Allah. Things that you can witness and you can see and you can know all of it. For what? All of this showing you Allah's vast power that he has, and all of this for one reason only, to show you the virtue of the one who purifies their soul, and to show you the loss of the one who corrupts their soul. This is a profound statement because really this brings us back to the virtue of purifying the soul and the importance of purifying the soul. And the meaning of it. So we were quoting Shaykh al-Islam. Rahimahullah ta'ala. In this statement. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا He said. قَالَ قَتَادَةُ وَابْنُ عُيَيْنَ وَغَيْرُهُمَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّا نَفْسَهُ بِطَاعَةِ اللَّهِ وَصَالِحِ الْأَعْمَالِ Qatada and Sufyan ibn Uyayna and others, they said, whoever purifies their soul with obedience to Allah and righteous deeds, this is the one who is mentioned in the ayah. Just out of interest, which of the type, two types of tazkiyah is that? When he said, This is building up, right? 
And it can also include the other type because tawbah is obviously min salih al-a'mal, no doubt. For this understanding, and he said in another place, he said, وَالزَّكَاةُ فِي اللُّغَةِ النَّمَاءُ وَالزِّيَادَةُ فِي الصَّلَاحِ Zakah in the language, it means to give increase and to develop in righteousness. He said, فَالْقَلْبُ يَحْتَاجُ أَنْ يَتَرَبَّ فَيَنْمُ وَيَزِيدُ حَتَّى يَكْمُلُ وَيَسْلُحُ the heart, it needs to be developed. The heart needs to be developed and strengthened and built upon until it becomes complete and until it becomes righteous. He said, كَمَا يَحْتَاجُ الْبَدَنْ أَنْ يُرَبَّ بِالْأَغْذِيَةِ الْمُصْلِحَةِ لَهُ Just like your body needs to have the food which will keep it healthy, your soul needs to have the food for the soul that will keep it healthy. And we also have to stop the things which cause our soul harm. So the, the body cannot be healthy. It's a nice example. The body cannot be healthy unless what? You give it what will make it grow and you keep it away from what will hurt it and what will harm it. Likewise, the soul. وَكَذَلِكَ الْقَلْبِ لَا يَزْكُ فَيَنْمُ وَيَتِمُّ صَلَاحُهُ إِلَّا بِحُصُولِ مَا يَنْفَعُهُ وَدَفْعِ مَا يَضُرُّهُ Unless you are building your soul with what it needs, and keeping it away from what harms it, you won't be able, you won't be able to develop your soul. The last topic we're going to talk about today is the importance of tazkiyatun nafs in Islam. We explained it. We're going to come to that question, inshallah. But let me let me answer because it's a nice question. When you put the two together, so what are we talking about? We're talking about developing the soul and building it up with praiseworthy attributes. And we're talking about cleansing the soul and removing from it the blameworthy attributes. So we're trying to remove oppression and ignorance. We're trying to remove from our souls the command to do evil. And we're trying to bring to our souls what? An increase and a great benefit and praiseworthy attributes, and we're trying to bring our soul to the stage where it becomes mutma'inna, it becomes obedient and tranquil in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last point we're going to mention today, there are a lot of points to mention. We haven't really started the topic, we're just introducing the topic. But the last point that we're going to mention today is the importance of tazkiyah to nafs in the religion of Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We only created the jinn and the men to worship me alone. This is very important because it tells you that you were created, your purpose. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah, your purpose is what? To worship Allah. If you don't fulfill that purpose of worshipping Allah, you will not be successful. You're going to be in a state of terrible loss if you don't fulfill the purpose that you were created for in this life. And that purpose is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal alone. And if we said that Allah said, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا then when we bring these two together, we see that tazkiyatun nafs is an essential part of worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal and it's an essential part of the reason that you were created. And that is why if we look at all of the, the people who are trying to find tranquility in their soul, all those people that are looking for 
اطمئنان النفس the non-muslims and the people who strayed from the sunnah and so on what do you see you see everyone is striving to find contentment in the heart and contentment in the soul everyone is trying for it everyone is looking for it everyone is striving to try to bring peace and contentment to their soul But unless they do it in the way that Allah legislated, they will not find that peace. That's why you find people doing all kinds of things to bring contentment to their soul. And I'm going to quote some of them in a moment. And the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِن كَانُوا مِنْ قَابَلُوا لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ In Surah Al-Jumu'ah, He is the one who sent among the unlettered people a messenger from them, reciting to them his ayat and purifying them. That means the Rasul was sent, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, بِتَزْكِيَةِ النَّفْسِ He was sent to purify the people's soul. Allah specifically mentions He was sent to recite the ayat and to purify the people's souls. And to teach them the Qur'an and the, and the hikmah. The Qur'an and the sunnah. There's a benefit in this ayah, by the way. This ayah actually secretly tells you how to purify your soul. You purify your soul by following the Qur'an and the sunnah and obedience to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the core of what it means to purify the soul. Because this is why Allah Azza wa Jal said, He recites the ayat of Allah, He teaches them the kitab and the sunnah, the hikmah, and because of this, yuzakkihim, He purifies them through this. And we already mentioned, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ تَسَّاهَا And the ayah in Surah Taha, we mentioned it also, وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ مَنْ تَزَكَّاهَا This is the reward of the person who purifies themselves. And the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ فَلَنُحْيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبَةً وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ فَلَنُحْيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبَةً وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Surah Al-Nahl Whoever does righteous deeds, whether male or female, while being a believer, we will give them the best life. We will give them the best life. This haya tayyibah, where is it? The correct answer, it is in all of the situations of the believer. It is hayatan tayyibah in this dunya. It is hayatan tayyibah in the barzakh, in the grave. And it is hayatan tayyibah in Jannati Adam, the gardens of paradise. And we will reward them with a reward according to the best of what they used to do. And the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ كَافِرُونَ Surah Fussilat. The zakah here is two types, zakat al-mal. They don't give the zakat, zakat al-amwal, zakat in their money. But also here, some of the scholars, they said the zakah here is generally. They don't come to the zakah. They don't try to purify themselves, not their soul, neither their wealth. And they are disbelievers in the hereafter. And the statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, كُلُّ النَّاسِ يَغْدُوا فَبَاعِئُ النَّفْسَةِ فَمُعْتِقُهَا أَوْ مُبِقُهَا Every single soul goes out in the morning. Every single soul goes out. Either, and that soul sells itself. Either it destroys itself, either it saves itself, or either it destroys itself. From this, by the way, there's an interesting parallel. If you look, that subhanAllah, Allah describes our relationship with Him as tijara. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى تِجَارَةٍ تُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ تجارة Many times أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ اشْتَرَوُا الضَّلَالَةَ بِالْهُدَى فَمَا رَبِحَتْ 
tijaratuhum wa ma kanu muhtadin many times allah describes our relationship with allah as tijara as a business but this is not a trade for this world it's not tijara to dunya it's tijara to al trading for what is in the hereafter and if a person does this and they concentrate themselves not on the trade of this dunya but on the trade of the akhirah so this person allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards them with the greatest of reward so every soul goes out in the morning everyone goes out to trade with their soul either you trade with your soul successfully and you free it or you trade with your soul and you sell your religion for a small price and then you you destroy it and the statement of zayd ibn arqam radiyallahu an he said la aqulu lakum illa kama kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha anta waliyuha wa mawlaha Zayd ibn Arqam, he said, I'm only going to say to you exactly what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say. O oh Allah, give my soul its purity and purify my soul. Give my soul its taqwa, its righteousness. Purify my soul. You are the best of those who purify the soul. Qatada, he said regarding the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Qad aflaha man zakkaha, man amila khayran zakkaha bi ta'atillah. He purifies it by obeying Allah Azza wa Jal. And likewise, he said, Bil amalis salih, be right by righteous actions. I'm going to finish with a quote of Al Mawardi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and a quote of Al Sa'di to finish inshallah this, e this evening. As an introduction, we didn't start the topic yet. We didn't get into the individual actions, but we just introduced the topic. Al-Mawardi rahimullah ta'ala, he said, لا بد من تزكية النفس ولا بد من تربيتها وإلا بقيت على نقائصها الطبيعية التي خلقت عليها he said, you have to, you have to carry out purification of the soul. And you have to nurture your soul. Otherwise, your soul will remain deficient with the bad characteristics that are in it by nature. وَبَقِيَ فِيهَا غَيْرُ ذَلِكَ مِمَّا يَكْتَسِبُهُ الْإِنسَانِ And the person will remain with the bad qualities they have gained, right? So this is very powerful what he said. First of all, you have the problem that your soul itself in its origin has a tendency to go the wrong way. <inaudible> Not only that, in your society, you are bringing in bad manners and bad habits into your soul. You're dirtying your soul by just living your life. So what should the person do? What does the person do? need to do he said by the way this dunya is full of things which harm you it's full of deficiencies it's full of problems so this affects your soul ibn sa'di he said rahimahullah ta'ala wadhalika jaza'u man tazakka he said ay tatahara مِنَ الشِّرْكِ وَالْكُفْرِ وَالْفُسُوقِ وَالْعِسْيَانِ The person cleansed their heart of disbelief and polytheism and defiance and disobedience. إِمَّا أَلَّا يَفْعَلَهَا بِالْكُلِّيَّةِ أَوْ يَتُوبَ مِمَّا فَعَلَهُ مِنْهَا Either the person never did it, and we hope we never worshipped idols, we hope that we never made dua to other than Allah, or the person repented from what they used to do. And then the person built upon their soul with iman and righteous actions. Because tazkiyah has two meanings. Clearing 
cleaning yourself and removing the impurities and adding much good. وَسُمِّيَتِ الزَّكَاةُ زَكَاةً لِهَذَيْنِ الْأَمْرَيْنِ And the zakah you pay in your money, the reason it's called zakah is because of these two things. It cleans your money from what is forbidden and it increases your money and gives you more. And that is what we want to do with our soul. To cleanse it from the things which cause it harm and to increase it in goodness. And that is the purpose of this uh, class inshallah ta'ala and we're going to be uh, taking this class every single Saturday after Salat al-Isha however there is one thing I would like you to to just pay attention to if you would like to attend the class regularly I would strongly encourage you to join the various uh, social media channels the telegram channel or the AMAU Academy so that you can be up to date if there are any classes which are missing because sometimes we have to travel and I would not like you to come a long distance and then you find there is no class. So uh, maybe Abdullah, you can tell me what's the correct thing. Tezkiyah DXP and that's on, on Telegram inshallah. Tezkiyah DXP. So they will update you when there is uh, any classes missing or anything like that inshallah. But next week we are hoping to have the class and we will start some principles with regard to Tazkiyat al nafs Because before we start the actual actions itself, we have to take some principles, right? Like what is allowed, what's not allowed, where are we taking this knowledge from? How does it come to us? Is this something the Sahaba did? How did they do it? So we have to take some principles. That will be next lesson, inshallah ta'ala. So we don't want to take uh, more of your time, inshallah. We try to keep the lesson any to a reasonable length. We try not to make it too long, inshallah. And that is what Allah Azza wa Jal made easy for me to mention and Allah knows best. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Because this class took a long time, I will not give time for Q&A. We'll just speak to the brothers at the end because maybe some people have been waiting to go for the last any hour. Uh, so we will not keep them, let them go. And then anyone who has questions, I can speak to them inshaAllah ta'ala. Uh, after the class. But sometimes if we finish the class early, we will give time for, for questions, inshallah.